Okay, in our video series of pulmonology lectures, in this video, we are going to talk about bronchiectasis. We are going to discuss the presentation as well as the diagnosis and treatment of bronchiectasis in detail. First of all, what is bronchiectasis? Bronchiectasis is an irreversible and abnormal dilation of the bronchial tree that produces chronic respiratory symptoms. In bronchiectasis, there is dilation, abnormal dilation of the bronchioles. That abnormal dilation of the bronchioles furthermore leads to excess mucus production. There is excess mucus production and there is dilation of the bronchi and bronchioles. Whenever there is excess mucus production, that mucus blocks the bronchioles. The bronchioles are blocked and behind that block, there is infection which leads to further destruction of the lungs. This is a picture showing healthy bronchi with slight mucus production, with normal mucus production. In this picture, there is excessive mucus production, increased mucus production. Therefore, the patient will have chronic cough and with chronic cough, there will be excessive mucus production in bronchiectasis. Usually, there is a local host infection, infection like tuberculosis, aspergillosis, and that tuberculosis or aspergillosis infection destroys the lungs. Or there is inflammation, inflammation as it occurs in cystic fibrosis, cartagnards and cystic fibrosis, the, the mucus secretions are thick and those thick mucus secretions block the uh, bronchi and whenever there is block, there is infection behind it. And there is destruction of the bronchi and bronchioles. Destruction of bronchi bronchioles leads to inadequate clearance of these secretions which further lead to infections. A vicious cycle begins. Airway obstruction and impaired host defenses due to lungs damage. The clinical presentation of bronchiectasis will be that the patient will be having chronic productive cough from months to years and patients will be having copious mucopurulent foul smelling sputum. With that, patient will be having dyspnea because there is obstruction of the lungs, obstruction of the bronchioles, as well as there is impaired oxygenation because of the lung damage. The patients will be complaining of hemoptysis, blood in sputum because there is damage of bronchial arteries. There will be change in shape of the nails that is called as clubbing of nails. Coming to the diagnosis of bronchiectasis, for the diagnosis of bronchiectasis, remember chest x-ray is the best initial test. Although chest x-ray is not specific, it does not give you the diagnosis of bronchiectasis, but chest x-ray can help you rule out many other causes of copious mucus production. Remember, usually a sensitive test is the initial test. A sensitive test is the initial test because sensitive test rules out many diseases. So chest x-ray will not help you in the confirmed diagnosis of uh, bronchiectasis, but it will help you rule out many other causes. So sensitive rules out the disease. This is a picture showing chest x-ray and look, these are the bron dilated bronchi that appear like this on chest x-ray. Now remember the most specific and confirmatory test for bronchiectasis is high resolution computed tomography HRCT of the chest. HRCT of the chest is the most diagnostic for bronchiectasis. Best initial test is chest x-ray and the most specific and confirmatory test is HRCT. This is a picture showing dilated bronchi and bronchioles in HRCT. In the later stages, whenever there is excessive destruction of these bronchioles, it leads to honeycomb appearance. This is a picture showing honeycomb appearance of the lungs. Other than that, you can also perform sputum culture and smear because these patients are highly prone to get infections. And usually whenever they get exacerbations, it's the infection which causes the exacerbation, worsening of the disease. So you must perform sputum culture and smear. Spirometry is not used for the diagnosis, but is, it is used for monitoring the disease progression. And usually it shows a obstructive pattern where the forced expiratory volume in the first second will be low. FEV1 to FVC ratio will be low. I have talked about FEV1 and FVC in detail in my video on asthma. You can check out the link in the description below. Now coming to the management of bronchiectasis. In the management of bronchiectasis, I have divided it into two parts. In the first part, I'll discuss the chronic long-term management of a patient with bronchiectasis. And in the second part, I'll discuss the management of exacerbations of bronchiectasis. Whenever a patient gets worsening of the symptoms, how do you manage that in emergency department? First of all, in the long-term management, the goal is to reduce the exacerbation frequency to less than or equal to two times per year. 
General measures include smoking cessation, stop smoking. In almost all the pulmonary diseases, the first and the most important intervention is usually smoking cessation. With that, these patients are having excessive congestion of chest due to uh, mucus secretions, and you need to drain this mucus secretion out. Chest physiotherapy by cupping and clapping and postural drainage. If chest physiotherapy helps drain out this all mucus from the chest. Other than that, these patients are always at high risk of getting infections. So these patients must receive seasonal influenza vaccine as well as pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. Coming to bronchodilator therapy, remember bronchodilator therapy is not the main part of treatment of bronchiectasis. Evidence which supports the use of uh, bronchodilators is very limited. But in specific cases, you can go for use of short-acting beta agonist inhalers like albuterol. Long-acting beta agonists can be given to patients who are having severe dyspnea. And other than that, corticosteroids are not routinely recommended. They are used only if the patient is already an asthmatic patient and that asthmatic patient has now developed bronchiectasis. Remember, bronchiectasis is usually developed in the patients who already have some existing diseases, some infections, some inflammations, either TB, either aspergillosis, either uh, chronic asthma. These are the patients, if they are not managed properly, the chronic destruction of the lungs leads to formation of bronchiectasis. In the pharmacotherapy, mucoactive agents are very important. Remember, the basic idea behind the whole therapy is to drain the mucus out of the lungs. By chest physiotherapy, by mucoactive agents, nebulized hypertonic saline is given 3 to 7% normal saline. It is nebulized to the patient and it causes lysis of the mucus and drains it out. Other than that, oral mucolytics include N-acetylcysteine, N-acetylcysteine present in the form of mucolator sachet. It, it is mixed with water and patient drinks it and it causes lysis of the mucus and drains it out. Remember that these uh, hypertonic saline and these mucoactive agents can sometimes cause bronchoconstriction in patients with bronchiectasis. So usually if the patients are to be started on mucoactive agents, prophylactically, sometimes bronchodilators are given. Coming to long-term antibiotic therapy, remember that these patients are at increased risk of getting infections. And long-term antibiotic therapy is considered only if the patient gets greater than or equal to three exacerbations per year. Three times in a year, patient gets worsening of disease. In that case, you can go for long-term antibiotic therapy. And remember, you take the sputum cultures first and then you start the antibiotic therapy so that when you start the antibiotic therapy and the culture reports are back, you can tailor the therapy according to the culture reports. Remember, the empiric therapy on which you can start before the culture reports are back is based on the presence and absence of pseudomonas. If, the, if you suspect that that patient has pseudomonas infection, then you can give tobramycin and estrionam in the nebulized form every 12 hourly and 8 hourly. And if you suspect that patient is not having any risk factor for pseudomonas and the pseudomonas is absent, in that case, oral azithromycin can be used. Oral azithromycin 250 mg daily can be given or you can give it three times per week. Now coming to an important point, oral azithromycin is a macrolide. And usually these bronchiectatic patients, these bronchiectatic patients have damaged lungs. And whenever there is damage to the lungs, whenever there is a disease that is causing destruction of the lungs, it also affects the heart at the back. Because heart is pumping hard, heart is having increased workload to oxygenate the blood in the lungs. Heart is right side of the heart is giving blood to the lungs and lungs are oxygenating it. But when the lungs are destroyed, there is increased workload on the heart and it leads to the damage of right heart side leading to core pulmonary right-sided heart failure. So whenever you are giving oral azithromycin, there is a chance that that patient might also be having core pulmonary right-sided heart failure Oral azithromycin can cause QT prolongation in heart and it can cause arrhythmias in heart. So be cautious about that when you are going to prescribe long-term antibiotic therapy with oral azithromycin. Remember, as I said that mucoactive agents can sometimes cause bronchoconstriction. So if you are giving these things, you should give bronchodilator first, then give mucoactive agents, then do chest physiotherapy, then consider using inhaled antibiotics for the treatment of bronchiectasis.
Now, if the patient is having severe bronchiectasis, which is not responding to the treatment, in that case, you can do surgical resection of the bronchiectatic part of the lung. You can remove a lobe in lobectomy. You can also go for lung transplant. Coming to the follow-up of bronchiectasis patients, the follow-up is done every 6 to 12 months. Yearly spirometry is done to see that whether the patient is getting better or even the patient is on the downtrend. Sputum cultures are done 6 monthly or 12 monthly depending upon the patient and you also perform ECG eco because as I said that these patients are at increased risk of right-sided heart failure poor pulmonary. CT chest with contrast is performed. Now if the patient is a diagnosed case of bronchiectasis and all of a sudden he comes to emergency department with high grade fever, with severe dyspnea, with very bad wheezy chest, in that case that patient is having exacerbation of bronchiectasis, some infectious agent has caused exacerbation of the symptoms. In that case you need to give oxygen if the patient is hypoxemic, you need to straight away give the mucoactive agents, you obtain the new sputum cultures. And for the empiric therapy, you ask the patient that whether he is having any report of the previous cultures. Usually, the, as I said in follow-up, we perform six monthly or yearly cultures of the patient's sputum. So those sputum cultures are now helpful whenever the patient gets exacerbation because at that time we are having that culture report and according to that culture report, we can give the empiric therapy till the time the new sputum culture reports are back. You tailor the antibiotic therapy when the culture reports are back and if the patient is hemodynamically stable, you send the home on 14-day antibiotic therapy. You also give mucoactive agents with chest physiotherapy. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable, you can admit the patient and treat with IV antibiotics. In summary, we talked about what is bronchiectasis, what is the pathophysiology, the clinical features, the chest x-ray best initial test, HRCT, the confirmatory test, long-term management with smoking cessation, chest physio vaccination, bronchodilators limited use, corticosteroids not used in bronchiectasis, for mucoactive agents are used, in the long term, antibiotic therapy can be given to patients who are having excessive exacerbation based on the presence of pseudomonas and you take the cultures first. How to manage an exacerbation of bronchiectasis and follow up of patient with ECG and ECO. The invasive procedures that can be performed. So this was all about bronchiectasis. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and pulmonary medicine lectures. I have made videos on COPD and asthma treatment in detail. You can check out the link of those videos in the description below. Thank you very much.